Hello everybody, it's uh, time for another weekly read. I have not been reading a lot this week, um, there were other things happening. Um, yeah, I we, we saw some friends this weekend and we were also working a lot in our garden pre-bumping project. So I didn't read a lot, but still I have some updates. Um, also, I wanted to do some housekeeping because next week uh, actually, yeah, um, on Friday I'm going to, to go on holidays for a week. So I will be back on the 29th of of July, which means that I'm going to miss the um, announcement of the Booker Prize long list. Or at least, the, the long list is the 27th, so um, yeah, I don't know if I will be able to film a video for that or I will just film something when I come back. Um, but yeah, also there will not be uh, weekly reads next week. I hope you're okay with that. Um, I will update you on everything I read um, afterwards, which is probably not going to be much because I will be on holidays. But yeah, anyway, I thought I would let you know. Uh, but with, uh, with that said, what I read this week... So the only book I finished this week is uh, All Our Names by Dinao Mengiste and this was part of my Invisible Cities project for July for Ethiopia. And this is a book about, it has two timelines and it's about this um, boy, man um, called Isaac and he, it's, it's suggested that he is from Ethiopia but he is actually studying in Kampala, in, uh, in Makerere University in Uganda. Um, and we follow the timeline when he is in Kampala and he it's trying to start a revolution with a friend of his and it's that part is told from the perspective of this friend and then we have another timeline where he is in the US later on um, and it's told from the perspective of Helen which is a social worker in the US that came in contact with him and ended up falling in love with him and having a relationship with him um, so yeah we kind of see it's not clear from the past uh, timeline in Uganda what happened, but we know that something happened because he's in the US um, and it's a bit of a mystery with what happened and why he ended up in the US and um, yeah, a little bit on, on that side. I don't want to say too much because of spoilers, but um, yeah, it's kind of exploring that. It's also talking about the um, political situation in that time stamp in, in Uganda because it's never explicitly mentioned but it kind of sounds it's around the time of Idi Amin um, and yeah the relationship with other countries in East Africa as well it's it's explored a little bit and then yeah of course in in the US we do explore a little bit on, on the race issues and on the um, refugee issues, but not too much. I, I think the the US perspective is a lot more focused on the love story as well, which I don't didn't particularly um, enjoy. Unfortunately, I thought that it could have been a lot more interesting if we focused on on other aspects rather than this love story between Isaac and Helen. But well, um, overall I think it was okay. Um, I liked some aspects of it, I didn't like some other aspects, so it was a little bit in the middle for me. Uh, but yeah, that's what I finished. Um, the other book I'm reading right now for Invisible Cities, it's um, El Caballo de Oro or The Golden Horse by Juan David Morgan, which is for Panama. And this is uh, set in the 1840s, 1850s when the they built a railroad to go through Panama because um, Panama was kind of the place to go from the east coast of the US to the west coast so they will take a boat to the east coast of Panama and then just make the short trip through the east of, uh, of Panama and then take another boat all the way to California um, that was normally the easiest route for, for them to, to cross the US. So it looks at this train they were trying to build between the east and the west coast 
of Panama and also the there are talks about building a canal or a channel which we now know it's what happens as well because Panama Canal is it's very famous um, but at this time it was considered to be a crazy idea and we explore all of that we also look at um, the the influence of the US in Panama because of all of this um, there are more and more people from the US living in Panama and how that that relationship built and it is still in that level right now uh, Panama does have a lot of influence from the US right now um, so yeah that also is, is looked into, into that and also the this coincides with the um, golden rush in California so that also is another factor of people wanting to go to California so this route being more and more important um, and I'm enjoying it so far it does have some love story again that I'm just not that interested in and also has a lot of talk about the bureaucracy of the process of building this railroad and this canal and where the money is coming from and all of those things and the engineering side of it as well um, but yeah overall I, I'm learning a lot of things that I have never come across before so I'm really enjoying that part of it um, again it's not the best written book I've ever read and it's not the most engaging book I've ever read in terms of the story and the characters but the the atmosphere of the place and the politics of the place and maybe it's just because it's so new to me and I didn't know about a lot of things before I am finding it really interesting um, and then the other book I'm currently reading is A Suitable Boy by Bikram Seth um, I have just finished part 3 of this which is around page 200 um, which is where I am supposed to be according to our body read I'm body reading this with uh, Lauren, Jotsna and Ash um, and we are trying to do kind of one part a week more or less although um, some of them have gone further than that um, because it is very immersive and very page turning which is a good thing when it's 1400 pages so uh, we still have a lot to go but I am enjoying this it's it's interesting because there is this part of it that is kind of a soap opera and it just immerses you completely into the story and you want to know what happens to the characters but at the same time um, we have started now in the third part to talk a lot about partition between um, Pakistan and India um, and what is happening to in the day-to-day -day life of these people because of that so for example the um, the main protagonist Lata one of the main protagonists she she is an unmarried woman which is not seen very well in, in this society um, even though she's like 20 21 something like that um, and she just met a, a boy that she really likes but he's Muslim so there is a whole thing about that because he's supposed to go to Pakistan at some point and I don't know like that there's a lot of things regarding that kind of relationship and what the partition did in society not as a whole but in the day-to-day -day life of people um, which I'm really enjoying so it's like a soap opera but you are also learning things about India so yeah I'm really enjoying this um, I don't know if I will read like only one part this, this week or I will do two each part is about 60-70 pages so it's not a whole lot to be reading so yeah I'm excited to continue with this one next week probably not finish it, obviously not finish it but just continue with it um, and also with my Panama book and after that I don't know what I will read uh, we will see um, as I said I'm going to be on holidays next week um, in, in Germany and I don't know if I will carry a lot of books or I will just rely on ebooks um, but I will let you know when I come back um, let me know if you have read any of these books what you have, have been reading uh, for Invisible Cities this month if you are reading anything and let me know if you have read uh, Suitable Boy and what you thought about it and yeah until next uh, week bye